On the last day of Red Snapper season, we headed out. Uh, it was the day after the full moon, but it was the same day the front was approaching. And typically after a full moon, you get kind of a slow bite because a lot of the, the fish are, are feeding all night. But with the front approaching, it has the opposite effect. Uh, the pressure dropping tends to send fish into a bit of a frenzy. So we rolled out to about 122 feet, 123 feet. So you're the depths here. And started catching a lot of red snapper, a lot of mangrove snapper. And what I'm looking at here on the depth finder, you can see there's a lot of little pretty solid shows. So the darker reds mean a better return to the, the fish finder, the Garmin unit. And when you get a lot of individual shows like that, it tells me the fish are being pretty active and that there's a lot of them. Uh, and you can see here, this is why I took the screenshot. I'm like, wow, look at the size of, of this return right here. That's something big sitting up off the bottom. And to show you the opposite effect, here's kind of when you see a lot of bait. So you see this just massive show of, of fish. And we get kind of a, a, you know, a tougher bite in situations like this. So I send the camera down when the show looks like this. And then I'm going to come back to the other screenshot here in a minute. And so the, the snapper I was getting... We're pretty high up in the water column. I was using an eighth ounce jig, um, one of the new models that I make with a little stronger hook because a lot of people want to, you know, horse, so you can see this is pretty low, horse snapper grouper and whatnot up when there's goliath grouper, sharks, kudas chasing after them. So the camera's going down, hasn't even gotten down that far, and you can already see mangrove snapper and, and quite a few of them. So the camera's spinning a little bit. And then a lot of bait that was there. Let me just go back here a minute. So here's kind of what the spot is. And this is that big show right there. If you can tell what that is, it's a Goliath grouper. So there's a pretty good look at it. He was being kind of active, getting away from this little cutout ledge, um, whatever you want to call it. It almost looks like it goes all the way through, like an arch almost, which would be pretty cool. Hard to tell. But camera hits the bottom. Get it straightened out. Red snapper attacking it. There's blue runners. There's trigger fish. There's snapper. So there's fish kind of all over. So you can look. Fish, 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 fish. Just scattered everywhere. Which makes sense when you're looking here. Fish scatter all over. Here's your big mark. There's your Goliath grouper. So that's kind of what you're looking at real time looking out away from the spot. So there's scamp grouper. There's red snapper. There's mangrove snapper. There's all kinds of good stuff. So there's one Goliath grouper. There's two Goliath grouper sitting in that little ledge. And actually, I might have missed this the last time I watched it. That looks almost like a gag grouper over there. Yep, there's a gag grouper sitting right there. Um, so all kinds of good stuff sitting on this little piece of hard bottom with that little cutout ledge. So we're dropping, you know, a lot of light stuff, some heavy stuff, getting straight to the bottom. The snapper bite ended up being phenomenal. Uh, every time we dropped, as soon as your bait, you know, got in the zone, if you're using a light jig head or light hog ball, you'd get a mangrove or a red snapper pretty high up in the water column. Or if you got down and then you just cranked up slightly, you'd get, uh, you know, one of these mangrove snappers sitting 10 feet, 15 feet off the bottom. So this is a pretty cool spot. 120 feet of water, visibility real good. As you can see, we're sitting right on this little cutout, and you can see into it. Pretty cool look. And the, the crazy thing is, not a single bee liner. Um, I caught two scamp grouper on a vertical jig. Uh, I caught one lane on a vertical jig. But beyond that, it's it's mostly mangrove snapper that were, you know, bigger than 20 inches. There's another scamp grouper right there. And a lot of red snapper. The red snapper weren't real big. We didn't have a whole lot of time to fish because that front was coming. Um, so we were keeping, you know, the 17, 18, 19 inch fish. And there were a lot of those in mixed in with all this. So there's a lane snapper there. All right. So now those are actually spade fish, it looks like, in the background. So if you can see... I'm going to show what happens when to the depth finder when all these other fish kind of kind of show up. But awesome look at this spot. And it doesn't really show up much on the depth finder in terms of the bottom itself. It's uh it's mainly just a, a fish show 
that gives it away. That ledge isn't, you know, real big. It's not long by any means. Um, and fishing, you know, once you start fishing, you, these snapper kind of show up all around the boat, which is a good way to do it. So what I actually did is I dropped the rodan back a little bit. So you can see now we're we're moving very slowly um, just because I wanted to kind of be able to see a little more of, of what this spot, spot might be. Um, this is the first time I videoed it. I fished it quite a few times. Always wondered kind of what it was, and, and seeing it definitely helps. Uh, so you can see there's another little piece of hard bottom back there. And there's um, starting to get some of that bait show. So the glass stay over close to that ledge. Uh, they don't really follow the camera much. At times they'll, they'll you know, stalk the camera basically. Um, so big school of mangrove snapper. I mean, that's that's hundreds of fish. And you can tell they're being very curious. You know, they're all kind of milling about the spot and none are sitting still. Um, they're looking upwards. When they're looking upwards, that means it's it's feeding mode for these fish. Uh, especially, you know, when you're dropping bait from the, the surface, they're looking for that bait coming down. And that's when you get those jig head bites that are that are awesome. You know, you'll, you'll hook fish 50, 60 feet below the boat, even though it's 120 feet deep. And they just take off for the bottom. And that's where the, the light spinning rods are. Are a whole lot of fun and you can catch a lot of fish i use 20 pound leader um eight ounce 16 ounce you know jig head when the current is not moving much and uh, you can get a lot of these fish way up in the water column uh, the vertical jig i was using was about 60 grams uh, green color had uh, owner um, stinger hooks on it and so i was able to get a couple scamps with that Let me just go forward a little bit here. So, okay. Didn't take long from where we were. So what ends up happening is all of a sudden the show just goes crazy on the Death Finder. So that's when these Blue Runners moved in. We ended up catching a few of them. And, and when you start to get some different bites and some fish pulling off, you know, the quick head shakes, and something's up, obviously. Uh, and that's when the Death Finder starts to look a little more like this. When you get these swarms of, you know, blue runners, cigar minnows, Spanish sardines, various bait fish that come in and, and just wreak havoc on your fishing for a little bit. So it's not always good to be fishing massive shows because a lot of times it can be stuff like this. Um, and on some of these just hard live bottom spots, bee liners will end up looking like that. And so when when this occurs, it's like, wow, what, how do you hook anything other than a blue run, <laughs> blue runner for for a little bit? Um, but they they come in and out. Obviously, they're not going to stick around forever. And on the surface, with all this bait down, we were hopeful to get a tuna. Uh, had a lot of big baits, big threadfin shiners, um, but it was mainly bonita. Even though we were using bigger baits, we were getting some bonita. Um, so I'll just kind of fast forward through this. So only a couple minutes later, blue runners aren't nearly as bad. Obviously, they they move on. Uh, very fast swimmers. They just kind of leave a little trail behind. They're almost like the locusts of the ocean when they come through. So the camera's spinning. Blue runners way off in the distance now. But the snapper still prevalent. Still looking for baits. Um, all kinds of goodies happening with them. Um, so you can see now the Goliaths get off the spot just a little bit. We dropped uh, some of the bigger rates we were dropping were pinfish. Ended up hooking one of the Goliaths, I believe. Um, I think I actually hooked one on a vertical jig, too. I forgot about that. I, I hooked one on the, the vertical jig that took me to the uh, to ledge. I put some heat on it, and the, the hook pulled, which I'm actually kind of glad about. Um, but we definitely got rocked up by you know, these glass dropping some of the bigger baits. I think after you hook them, you know, a couple times, and they tend to, to slow down and leave you alone. Um, versus a wreck when there might be, you know, 30, 40, 50 glass, it's hard to, to turn them off just because there's so many of them. But when there's only two like this, um, they turned off pretty quick after being hooked. Um, so let's look at this spot. I'll just go fast forward a little bit because I bring the camera up fairly slow. So there's spade fish now. So you'll get kind of that same show. 
as that massive school of spade fish moves in, but they aren't nearly as bad as the uh, the blue runners is of eating everything. Um, so camera's coming up, just kind of spinning around. See the Goliath out away from that little cutout ledge right right there. Um, bigger one, same. Gets out away from the spot. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you kind of just some of the fishing, what it was like above. Um, what you'll notice is I'm using only a 4,000 spinning reel with 20-pound leader, 8-ounce jig heads. Um, all, the, all the tackle you can get on, on my website if you want, captainchappy.com, um, that I was using. And you can see these fish that, you know, are up in the water column. They're actively looking for some of those uh, the, those slow-dropped baits. And that's when you get the bigger fish. If you're using heavier stuff, you're going to fly right by them. You need that light stuff that that moves slowly, tantalizing them through the, the water column. Um, so, yeah, hopefully you enjoy. Uh, and you'll see exactly what it was like and how good it was. Thanks. Lighter rod. Oh, you switched rod. Yeah. Same jig? No, this is a, just a shrimp tipped. Oh. Big mango, I think. Yeah, real big mango. I don't have a net handy. That was way up in the column, too. Some Can somebody else help me out here? <laughs> 19 and a half. I'll do that again. How about this? Is it a bigger red snapper? Oh, nice mango. Uh, we're out here trying to catch red snapper and we can't. This is a good one. You got a net, Kyle? Huh? You got a net? I, I think I got a big red snapper. I only got 20 pound leader. Oh, it broke. Do you have anything? Big, yeah. Oh, it's just a mango. Just a mango. Just another 20 inch mango. All right, I can at least lift him in. Yeah, 10 per. It's close. They're like all getting cookie cutter size. Cookie cutter 20 inch mangoes. 12. 12, actually. 12 out here. Yeah. This is actually bigger than the last one. Dude, this is good right now. Did you get hit? Come on, you. Are you really? Can you tell which way? Whoop. Yeah, you're wrapped. What is it, Caleb? Oh, that's a little keep. Looks like a keep. It's colored like a red snapper. It's a monster mango. Uh, yeah. Nice. Hell yeah. Donnie, he'll bite you if you're not careful. Yeah. on the uh, chunky chunk. I think I got clean. That's a red. That's, like, that's 16. I'd say, oh, never mind. Hold on. That was way up. It's way up in the cold. And we're back. I got hit hard and now it's something little. Maybe it's a scamp. 
I got hit hard and it's still hard. I got a water bottle between my legs. <laughs> Yeah. Bait size. Whew. This is a mango, it's a freaking beast. And, uh, red red snapper. Yeah. Uh, God, you threw a number four, right? Well, there's five. Get some baby. Back to that quarter. I should send the GoPro down here, try to figure out what the spot is. Red snapper? Nah, maybe. Maybe. Double header. Not a double header. Mangoes are back. Watch your head. How far down? Uh, pretty far down. That's that might be the biggest one yet. We got a bunch of 20 inches in there, so I don't know. Mango tango back. They heard the troll motor turn. It's a red, isn't it? Number eight. Mm, close. I mean, I'll still fillet it for bait. If not today, later. Oh my god. Or will I? What was it? Bonita. Number 10. Yeah, just slide me your leader. Yeah. Numero 10 -o. Uh, Come on, peel. Okay, you burned through enough, but it's acting like a bonita, isn't it? This is where we knew to Andrew to catch like 15 of them in a row. Oh, what are you doing here? Hi. John, Kevin, Johnny. 